So uh, let's move right on to the next speaker, Bogdan Klich. Thank you very much for having this chance to talk about uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, challenge. The Ukrainian challenge for all of us uh, again. I do remember our conversation last year when we were talking about uh, first uh, conclusions uh, that we could uh, have after the first phase of uh, uh, this uh, Ukrainian resistance against uh, Russian uh, second invasion on its uh, territory. There are not so many good news from uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, front, but there is at least one good news from Ukrainian neighborhood. And I'd like to underline that because it uh, refers to my, uh, uh, my country, I'd like to, you to know that Poland is back. That Poland is back. Yeah. Poland is back after uh, uh, recent elections in which 74% uh, of uh, Poles decided to return to the community of values that uh, uh, for many years uh, we attended and uh, we, uh, we were proud of. Uh, I mean, this community consisting of uh, democracy, liberal values, uh, political freedoms, uh, the rule of law, of course, and uh, the rights of uh, minorities. And uh, uh, the government uh, that was responsible for undermining this, uh, uh, this understanding of the West uh, in, uh, in Polish eyes and also in uh, international public opinion will be soon removed from, uh, from power. So our full uh, integration with European Union uh, will be continued. Our uh, cooperation with our main partners and a good relationship with uh, uh, our neighbors uh, will be recovered. And of course, our contribution to, uh, mm, uh, let's say, to support Ukrainians as those who are fighting for those values uh, will be continued. So the, after this declaration, <laughs> important declaration from uh, my national point of view, I can uh, move to, to, to the topic of this uh, discussion. Mm, once uh, during this conference, I described uh, uh, the situation after 2014 and the first invasion of Russian troops uh, on Ukraine together with the creation of the Islamic State as a crescent of fire surrounding Europe from the, from the east and from the south. Now, unfortunately, it exists and the scale of this uh, fire is uh, much, uh, much bigger. The challenge is much uh, harder for us, I mean for European and Euro-Atlantic uh, community, and the responses to that should be much wiser than uh, after 2014 and 2015. So from that point of view, I would say that uh, the results of a NATO summit in Vilnius, recent one, uh, were, were, a good, were a good sign, you know, for uh, implementation of those decisions that were taken one year before, I mean, uh, during the Madrid summit. Uh, we should go this way to implement the new model of uh, forces uh, that was uh, established after the Madrid summit, uh, the new model of uh, forces responsible for reinforcing those countries that would be uh, would be attacked in uh, in future, and uh, the eastern flank of the alliance belongs to this group of uh, countries. Secondly, the number of forces, I mean, this uh, a huge increase of forces uh, from the 30,000 to, from 40,000 to 300,000 response forces uh, that would be responsible for this reinforcement should be achieved as quickly as possible. The new model of deterrence, this shift from deterrence by punishment to de deterrence by uh, denial should be also implemented as quickly as possible. And fourthly, the decision concerning regional plans, regional defense plans, uh, responsible not for 
reinforcement of uh, a country or a group of countries attacked but uh, for uh, defending every inch or every square meter of NATO territory should be also implemented. Those four major decisions of Madrid summit repeated uh, by Vilnius summit and implemented to some extent uh, this year are of major importance for security of the Euro-Atlantic community. As for the European Union, uh, I believe you know that uh, uh, Russian invasion on Ukraine created a completely new space for the EU and the EU uh, carried out a kind of Copernican revolution. Copernican revolution in the sense that uh, it was uh, the first time engaged in support, uh, military support of a country not belonging to the European community. Secondly, that it decided to allocate such a huge amount of money for macroeconomic uh, injections into this country budget. Uh, as far as I remember, it was 11.6 uh, billion euros only by the European Union last year. And for this year, we estimate around 18 billion euros when, for the military purposes, we were able to allocate last year 5.6 5.6 billion euros, not counting allocations, not counting financial supports coming from particular member states of uh, the European Union. So this is the huge change in, uh, uh, in uh, activity of the European Union and it should be continued. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, important points being made there, uh, both in relation to the European Union and NATO. Uh, also. Uh, I'm sure that many people will be glad to hear that Poland is back, and I'm, I'm certain that, that Ukraine is glad to hear what you just said regarding the uh, pledge of support, continued support for Ukraine, because Poland has played a, a, a crucial role in, in strengthening Ukraine as it seeks to, to repel Russia's, Russia's ongoing invasion. Very good. Yes.